So I'm going to um, just mention to people that during our last interview, we talked about President Obama and the possibility of a World War III. You said that you know humanity at this time is, is a match or for the possibility of World War III, and then here it is six, seven weeks later, and things have ramped up, you know, big time in that direction. So um, I'm wondering what your, you know, thoughts are on the direction that things are going. What's going through Obama's head at this time? You know, considering this possible strike against Syria, considering all of the, you know, crazy possible outcomes. Um, and did you see his his uh, um, press conference this morning by any chance? No. Okay, he, he, he had a press conference um, in, in Russia, and uh, that was the first press conference I've seen with him in, in quite a long time, and it was quite interesting to see his, you know, his answers to things, and he's definitely, you know, he's such a thoughtful guy, um, and, uh, you know, intelligent, and, you know, seems to have conviction that this is the right thing to do. Um, to me, it seems, you know, basically insane to be leaping into yet another conflict. So, um, anyways, what, what sort of thoughts do you have on that? <laughs> Usually the same thoughts as I always share, which is that basically we live in a, a time-space reality right now on planet Earth where corporations are the ones that really run our universe. So if it's looking like we have to maintain control of the dollar, and if it's looking like we need to, you know, if we're, like we're going into massive amounts of debt right now, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the countries which are really controlling the dollar, if you want to put it that way, are is starting to sway, so it's no longer America. <clears throat> if we lose control of, you know, foreign control, basically, of the value of the dollar, then we are basically in for it. Mm -hmm. So the issue is when you've got somebody who's got a mind kind of like he does for finances... And, of course, a lot of this kind of information isn't shared with the general public. Yeah. You know, the real reason isn't why we're, isn't shared with the general public. What's shared with the general public is basically cover reason, which is always like, you know, some sort of, oh, look, we're going to help other people reason. Yeah. And usually makes people want to jump on board. When behind scenes, the, the energy's kind of a, like, let's not panic them as far as just how frail our financial system is right now in the entire world. Yeah. Because the yeah. ones that you know have controlled it for so long have really played this game to a degree that now it's so shaky that it is on the verge of collapse. Yeah. We're not talking collapse like nineteen twenties collapse, we're talking collapse like Rome collapse. Mm. So so if you want to maintain control of foreign you know, of foreign oil specifically so that you can maintain the value of the dollar here, then we have to find a way to go over there and make ourselves a presence. So, you know, what's really upsetting me is that he's kind of making the same decision right now that was made by the Bushes yep, before, exactly. which is not something which I anticipated, you know. But it's not really surprising because these, these people that we have in control right now are, you know, right. I say quote-unquote control because these people are they're just figureheads. That's all they are. Hmm. They're not the ones, you know, we look at the, the president's kind of just like a poster child for a, a much larger family, which is in control of all of this. Yeah. A group of families, really. <clears throat> so the bottom line is they're going to make any excuse they can make in order to get to the Middle East. Yeah. Because the Middle East right now is, is kind of like the wild card. It's the one that's out there that's the most pissed, that is actually the one which holds the key to potentially taking control of the, the world dollar. And the, the value of, of money here, mm -hmm. you know, sets the stage. And it's never looked very good, honestly. You know, when I look at the life paths of mankind, obviously, ultimately, what we're headed towards is a kind of a unified society. But <coughs> what it's going to take to drive people there is sort of a story I like to leave out, you know. Because while most of us who are listening to this kind of a call are already on board with that kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, the potential of societies which don't even run on the dollar. Um, unified societies, much more utopian. We're not the ones that are really supporting all of these things that are happening in the government. And so, 
the ones that we basically, I don't want to say worry about, because anything you focus on, you line up with, but the ones that we really have to worry about if we were going to play that game are the people who are not that way, which is by far and away the majority. Yeah. Who are in a low enough vibration that they have not even gotten to the point where they desire that. They're the kind of people that see things vertically. They'd rather America be on top of other countries rather than humanity be unified regardless of where you come from. Mm -hmm. So they're the kind of people that fall into this trap of divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. and, and when you've got that many people who are all focused on that desire, then they're going to manifest that desire. And obviously once they line up with it, they're going to change their minds. They're going to have a new desire, but, you know, what it is that they're lining up with right now is not the most fabulous. Yeah, it's... I have made real sure to get my passport for myself and everyone else in the house. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm my my escape plan is basically I'm uh, headed to uh, Bali, most likely, in a couple of weeks. Sometime mid-October, mid but Asia in general, where you can, you know, live for cheap and... It's the tropics, and and uh, I just don't want to be in North America, basically. So, so do you see it that that? Oh, I know. Yeah. So, do you see it that uh, Obama is, to some extent, being um, deceived and like, you know, this the the whole uh, pretense at this point is this chemical attack, which just looks like false flag, you know, like crazy. Um, do you think that Obama is is basically? Um, that he understands all of what you are talking about and that he's going along with the program or more that he's getting drawn into it? Uh, he's getting drawn into it. Yeah, yeah. He's getting drawn into it, and it's a very compelling argument they make because, I mean, it's, it, we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Because if if we lose control of the dollar in the world right now then and our economy falls, which is what he's ultimately in charge of, then that looks like the Great Depression times, you know, 100. Yeah, I've been... For, for American citizens. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of videos uh, on that, and it isn't, you know, for conspiracy theorists anymore of, of the uh, potential collapse that's, that's coming. Like, all, you know, mainstream economists who are heads of oh, major yeah. corporations, etc., are all saying, you know, the situation with, with, uh, with the dollar, with derivatives, you know, with the money printing, etc., is all just... You know, holding you know holding things together. It's a house of cards. It's it's oh, on, yeah. on the verge. Yep. See, my plan is to stay in America because obviously, my um, I'll explain. So okay. go for it. And I want to be basically where I'm needed the most. Yeah. So I'm, so this is how it goes. I'm going to be in the country I'm needed the most, which will be America, until the point at which I can no longer do my job and be here. Uh huh. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're. Which might come sooner later yeah so you're, pre you're prepared for all eventualities basically yes yeah which is an interesting process of course because it's like it's like you know right now what we're looking at those of us who are able to see the, the future of mankind and where we're currently headed mm -hmm. <laughs> we're creating some really amazing things you know like earth ships that are already in development and these sustainable communities which don't rely on on finances at all mm -hmm. um, we're creating some really amazing sort of backups right now so that when that goes down we can actually put that into action and it will become the new blueprint for society but at the same time it's this interesting thing where we have to kind of live in this uncertainty and, and live in a, a way in which we sort of come to grips with the idea of totally letting go of things I mean non-attachment yeah you know, every, I'm at the point right now where every time I put money in the bank, I, it's a process of releasing resistance to losing it completely. I, yeah, I, I hear you. I've got cash on hand just in case, but but uh, um, yeah, I mean things things could change in a day or a yeah, week or whatever. Yeah, and then so, so what I usually tell people, this is what I usually tell because people say, well, what should I do with my money? You know, you obviously are able to see things, so what should I invest it in or what should I put it in? And the interesting thing is, when you look at the, the dollar in the world, mm -hmm. a dollar is a representative of human energy. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So it's like you, you're saying, I'm, I'm going to put an hour worth of my energy into you know, whatever I'm doing, and that's worth some dollar amount. Mm -hmm. And so if you, look at, if you look at the real value, what the real value is, is, is basically human energy. Mm -hmm. And so 
what I usually tell people who are headed into this time period is that the most important thing you can possibly do is to hone a skill, hone a talent, or something that is of value to others. Because that's your only guarantee in the future as far as, far as your own survival, you know? Something that has real value. I mean, everyone's talking about gold and silver, etc. But that's that's based on the current financial system. I mean, that's, exactly, you know, what, what do you do with a bunch of bars of gold when you're hungry and the economy's collapsed? Exactly. 